Okay, let's choose up. I'll take Jamal and Too Tall. You can have Chubbs and Skippy. Let's go. My ball. Okay. But you got skins. Not a good negotiator? You don't have to be a good negotiator at McCarthy Chevrolet. McCarthy guarantees the lowest prices on a new Chevy or we'll pay you $10,000. We guarantee there's no need to shop anyplace else. McCarthy Chevrolet, I-35 and Santa Fe, Olathe. Welcome to Hour 2 of the Midwest number one weekly motorsports show, Track Talk, All right. on the Racing Boys Broadcasting Network, brought to you by McCarthy Chevrolet. Once again, here's Scott Trailer and Kirk Elliott. Welcome back, hour number two of Racing Boys Radio here on RacingBoys.com. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Look, you see the phone line? Phone number, I should say, at the bottom of the page. See it? 816-833-8553. 816-833-8553. If you need a toll-free number, not many people do anymore, but you have it right there. 888-883-6363. Give us a call. This is the hour where we like to hear from you, the listener. So uh, give us a call. I will tell you that we have our Racing Boys t-shirts back from out on the road. Uh, picked them up from the Racing Boys uh, or the ASCS t-shirt trailer. Jason Johnson basically is who that was. His wife, Bobby, who is expecting, uh, took care of a lot of the drivers as well as racing boys and selling T-shirts along with the Jason Johnson T-shirts. We got those back. We have a very few of those left. Um, best caller today gets a T-shirt or a hat. Your choice. T-shirt or a hat. Your choice for the best call today. 816 816-833-8553. Again, 816-833-8553. You see it on the screen. And I need to steal one of them T-shirts from you that I You missed. don't wear T-shirts, Kirk. When was the last time you wore a T-shirt? Uh, I wear them around the house. Are you wearing one right now? Long sleeve one. <laughs> around, around the house and out and about when I'm not in here. And, Working in, in the garden or something? In a professional manner. But uh, I would wear a Racing Boys T-shirt. Do you? Are if, you buying that, Todd? Todd, are you buying that Kirk could wear a, I don't have a, one. a T-shirt out in general public? Are you buying it? Uh, not in general public. He's asked me, though, about my T-shirt. What, what I, when, yes. I, when I was going to grab one of those T-shirts, you'd already had them out on the road. So they you were, were gone. gone yeah. And I didn't, ha- didn't it, have one if it, I wanted one. That T-shirt would have just been hanging in his closet with moth holes now in I it. I wear them. Huh? He's got a T-shirt on today. I've never seen uh, him. I know it. I know it. Tea. How about that? I was going to put a, a Racing Boy shirt over it before I left the house this morning. Right. And guess what? I forgot. Got to put it on. That's why I don't have a racing boys. Uh, I'm not surprised that he forgot either. I'm just saying. Oh man. Oh, well, anyway, it is what it is. Uh, sound good back there, everybody on the chat room. Everybody good there. So uh, make sure that. W- Sorry about that. I don't know what the problem was. Hour number one, but uh, I think we got it all fixed there. And the something. most important thing is that it's working now. Um, something going on with the U stream stream something. That's what you're saying. I don't know if I'm buying what you're selling, but uh, um, I know that people, Racetrack Ronnie, said it's the Racing Boy Speedway action from uh, I-70. We were attempting to try to pull that up to we show got, you. We got some. You've got it? Todd, got Todd it. thinks he has it in there, so we're going to attempt to show that at the end of the show. Uh, I hope everybody has enjoyed it. It's pushing like 1,800 views. It's only been up there a couple days. Uh, we expected as much. Todd, you've done a great job on putting that together. Well done, Todd. Spire. Well done, well done. Mucho gracias. Uh, mucho gracias. <laughs> and uh, anyway, that uh, this video was uh, retrieved from uh, Larry Myrtle and Jeff Eller. Actually, we got it from Jeff Eller, but we were told that Larry Myrtle uh, was part of the uh, uh, photography or part of the process of filming all that uh, video from the 90s. And uh, it, it's pretty interesting. So we're going to try to show that at the end of the show. Uh, maybe some of the people on the chat room can talk about it as it's playing. Some of maybe their favorite drivers or some of the moments. But uh, Well, that brings you back, doesn't it? When you watch that video, it just immediately brings you back to I-70 Speedway and what that felt like to watch those cars go around that racetrack. Or go out of that racetrack. <laughs> or get <laughs> burned up at that racetrack. Man, or try oh to knock the wall down at that racetrack. There's you know, a lot of that going on. And the longer it's been since we've seen races out there, uh, the more special it becomes that, you know, we'll probably never, ever see a facility or a racetrack like that again in our lifetime. 1020, all you got to do is uh, just go to the top of the page that you're on now, the chat room page, and you'll see where it says 
Let me make sure what I'm telling them to do. Just go up where it says On Demand, and that will take you to our YouTube page, and it's the first video. Or actually, It's on the homepage right now. Well, actually, it's sitting right next. If you're looking at us on the screen right now in studio, you see the little video player that's right next to it? Just click on that and watch it. You can watch it as you're watching us. Whoa, that That's, might get you dizzy. I was gonna get you, <laughs> you do up. something. It might get me all messed up right there. But uh, anyway, it was a lot of fun seeing all that. Brings back memories, and you know what brings back memories the most is the big crowds that place used to have oh, prior to uh, the two thousands. The nineties were the 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 best year. It was a regional track. I mean, people drove in from hundreds of miles every you, week to see those you, races. You said something, Kirk, when we were watching. You, you don't see that anywhere else. Where the fans in unison stand, stand up. Stand up. Yeah. When there was a wreck getting ready to I never saw that anywhere else, where they would just all in unison stand up. They, they, they were seasoned, weren't they? People, yeah. they, they knew how to look up and, and recognize when there were, a wreck was getting ready to take place. And what is even more amazing is how no one got killed in that period of time that these videos were shot. Really, it is. I mean, because some of those wrecks that you see... I can't think who the 12 car that hits the uh, the mm-hmm. pylon there coming off a of turn two goes up and hits the scoreboard. That That is close to Michael Waltra wreck at Bristol type wreck. I mean, it, it, it disappears into the poles of that sign. Well, the Rick Carver wreck, much the same way. Rick Carver was very lucky not to lose his life because I looked at the roll cage when that was done. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I put that on one here. There, the, the pole that goes across your halo right here, it came loose, and that thing was like this close to jabbing him in the neck. I mean, it was inches away from just sticking him right in the neck. I talked to Gary Joslin, and he he mentioned that that same wreck uh, yeah. about how, how how bad that wreck. Oh, was. it was horrible. That was, that was so many close calls out there, and that scoreboard, the way it was anchored. That thing didn't move. You weren't knocking it a down a millisecond. You weren't knocking that scoreboard down because a lot of people would try. It didn't move at all. It had no give in it. Right. So just check it out and watch it. It it's, uh, brings back memories, but also confirms that maybe that track is just not a weekly racing <laughs> track. It was exciting though, wasn't it? Well, again, I, I've said it. If it opened up today, I'd be building something to race there again. But I don't see it opening. So. I don't want to get all going on down that road. but We I, all have our memories. Yeah, memories. Um, but now that that place has been vandalized and everything's been stolen out there, I, I, I'm, my gut tells me it's never going to open again. The, fit, the, the photos that we uh, displayed here, what that's been a couple of years ago now? Can you imagine Can what you it looks like Can you imagine what now? it looks like today? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. at that time, you had trees and all kinds of different uh, vegetation growing up in the cracks in the in the main grandstand. Buildings were falling down at that time. I don't know if anybody has been out there lately to see what the f- place looks like, but uh, can't be good. We do have footage of it when it was dirt. So uh, you just got to go back and go to the uh, go where it says uh, Racing Boys TV. Click on that, and I believe you will find that on the. Let me tell you where it's at exactly. If you go to up there at the top, it says Racing Boys Radio and Racing Boys TV. Go down to where it says Special Features. And you go through that inventory of shows there, and you will find some sportsman racing from the mid-'80s uh, with Tom Charles, Billy Deckman, Burt Kiever, um, several drivers that you'll be familiar with. It, it, uh, got that video back in the day from a good friend of mine, Julia Deckman, and uh, so I posted that up there. Oh, should I put that up there a couple years ago maybe, that video from the dirt? It's been that long ago. It's probably been that yeah. long ago. But you can find that there. Again, just go up to the uh, Racing Boys TV, click on that, and it will take you to that page. And and I will tell you, folks, that page isn't going to be up much longer. Right, Kurt? Yeah, we're moving back to the, as many of you know, I've already found out that uh, we launched the new back end of the website here about a week and a half ago. Had a couple of hiccups. And uh, we, had some, we went to what's called a cloud server that's some new technology. You're going to get didn't have way over the, these guys' head didn't, here. Didn't have all the uh, bugs worked out of that new technology, so we've since had to backtrack a little bit, go back to a dedicated server now that we've got ready to go, and we'll be launching that here probably in the next uh, few hours. Today. Uh, within, today, because uh, we want to start taking subscriptions for the 
Tulsa Shootout and Chili Bowl, uh, which is coming up here before you know it. And so the registrations that we took for the forum board will apply uh, for the when we relaunch this again. So those of you that registered for the new forum board, uh, they're all still there. If you have any issues getting logged back in, just let us know, and we'll get you transitioned over. And I, I, I think there was some uh, complaints about how small the type was on the new form board. We changed the font size. And we it? changed it a little bit. We can change it some more. We'll, we'll We're try open to get it, for ideas we, here. We'll try to get it to where everybody can. It's supposed to work similar to the current form board, uh, but uh, we'll take any and all your ideas of how we can make it better, and we'll uh, try to try to get all these things corrected as we move we, along. We hate that we have to change the form board. I hate it as much as anybody. I just hate it because we have nearly 20,000 registered members over there right? and uh, tens of thousands of uh, messages. And so we, I hate that, but it, it needs to be done to keep up with the times. The spam was spam, the biggest problem. Spam is yeah. a big deal, and trying to keep it away is just a never-ending process. And uh, so we were told by our IT advisors at uh, Turn 2 Media that they, they suggested that we change the, uh, the form board, and so we're going to do it. Not to, not to my wanting to. I can tell you that. Did not want to do it, but uh, hopefully everybody will support it as they have the the previous two. Now, this isn't the, the original form board because we had one before it. It's the third one. This is it? the third one yeah. we've had. So just uh, work with us on that a little bit. Re-register. And, and it's going to make it simpler for people that want to register for the Chili Bowl broadcast. Everybody be able to go to one place, register. The way we had it set up, if you wanted to listen to the Chili Bowl or one of our paid per listen broadcast you had to register separately right and this is going to eliminate that eliminate that one process. one place to register for the forum the chili right. bowl everything right. and it's a new database try to make it simpler and better uh, that's the whole idea and as far as the new forum board is concerned we encourage everyone to get on there and uh, create as much conversation as you had so that we can get the momentum built back up on it and uh, like we have it now all right, let's go to the phones. You got to pot it up in there, Todd. All right, Bob is on the line. Bob, you're on with the Racing Boys. How's it going, bud? Hey, Scott, Kirk, what's up, guys? Hi, Bob. Hey, Bob. Hey, looking forward to the Chili Bowl coming up. Just you know, Sammy and Kevin's had such a uh, hold on that thing in the last few years there. But I tell you what, this year I'm kind of I'm kind of curious to see if Kyle Larson can do anything. This young man is just impressing the hell out of me. What can he do, Bob? I mean, that guy's like a freak of nature. I, I know. I mean, you know, the turkey night deal, it, it, he's so versatile. I mean, he's uh, – I think this is a young man that has got to, you know, bar anything going wrong. I, I think he's got a big future ahead of him. Did, I mean, I watched him in the truck races. I know, you know, the incident with him and Dylan. And Dylan but, I mean, the, he adapts so well to about anything they put him in to be so young. I just – I. I look for him. I look for big things out of him at the Chili Bowl. Yeah, you know, I think it's uh, young money is best said. I think that is him. Young money is going to go a long ways in the sport. He's got a lot of talent. Hopefully, they don't move him along too quick. But you know, we've seen that before. Guys with, like Kenny Irwin comes to mind. That maybe could have had a more successful career. Not saying he didn't have a successful Cup career, but obviously, I think they moved him up just a little bit too quick. And. Um, um, I, you know, I, I think that uh, the future is uh, is bright. What for, I'm concerned about. Well, did you see that? You, Bob, did you watch that turkey race? Did you watch it? Did you buy the? No, broadcast? I did not get to watch it. Hines was putting on the pressure like you would not believe, and he never wavered one second. I mean, well, he was working him on the inside, the outside, smoking his tires, doing everything he could to get in the young gun's uh, head, and it didn't happen. And it was just a remarkable because. Um, Here's Hines, one of the best midget drivers in the world, taking on a guy that has, well, some experience, but not the most experience in the world at a young 17, or he's 18, I believe now. He has to be 18 if he's driving a NASCAR. Yeah, I thought he was 19. Didn't he turn 19? He might be 19, but he's I over. Yeah. yeah, but anyway, I don't know, yeah, Bob. I, just, I, I agree with you. He's 
for his age, he's so, uh, I mean, he doesn't get shook. That's what I said the night watching him on the truck race. You know, I thought, boy, here we go. I hope, uh, kind of like, like you spoke, I hope they don't move this kid through so fast that it just eats everything up. But there was at one point there, I mean, he was in the middle of a four-wide deal and just, I mean, was going just like, you know, this is something I do on a, a weekly basis, right. and, and it's no big deal for me. I just, I don't, you know. I don't know. Maybe I'm tooting these horns hey, too much. No, but no. I just, uh, you know I've what? Just been really impressed with the young man. I think I, I think Dylan needs to take responsibility for that wreck too. I think he come down on him. He did. Yeah, you, I, I agree. I D- mean, uh, Dylan I, racing for a championship, he should have not been blocking a guy that had no play in the championship whatsoever. Yeah, I bad, agree with you. Bad, bad mistake on Dylan's part. And I like the Dylan boys. Yeah, I think they're gonna. I, I think they're gonna take a lot of heat. For being Richard's grandsons, and they're going to think that a lot of people are going to think they're spoiled rich kids making their way into it. But those both of those kids, Ty and Austin, have huge talent. Yeah, they've got some talent. I know. I watched uh, uh, Denny Hamlin. You know, made the remark about you know we all know how you got your ride and blah 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 blah. And I, I agree. I think they're going to get a lot of that. But I think both of them can back it up. I mean, it, I it, do too. It's and you know it's not like they tear up a lot of equipment and that you know i mean we've we've seen that happen too but uh i i just uh both of those kids now there's i think there's a lot of future you know bright future for these young drivers coming up if they and i think richard has done it slow enough not to uh not to really uh you know just make a point that hey they're my kids i'm throwing them out there like it or not yeah, yeah. Uh, the, thing, the thing about Kyle Larson is, after that bad wreck he had at Eldora, oh, scary. in that non-wing sprint car, you wonder, that video. you wonder how many more times that they'll allow him. No, to, they're not going to allow him to run non-wing cars anymore. Yeah, yeah. Well, he, well, I watched that. He still ran a midget the, though. That's yeah, a non-wing, non-wing sprint car. Oh, okay. They're not going to allow him to run them anymore. Is it the midgets not as dangerous? Oh, as they're the just as dangerous. But I, I don't think they. That, maybe the folks down there at Turner don't understand how dangerous those cars are. <laughs> hey, uh, Bob, before I let you go. Um, next year down at LA, is there any chance, and, and you might not know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask you, is there any chance that the 305s could be sanctioned by ASA next or ASCS next year? You know, I don't know. I haven't talked to Mike or Carolyn for, I, the last time I seen them was down at the Jesse Hockett Memorial down at Wheatland. Mm-hmm. And, uh, they didn't, they didn't mention didn't, didn't answer or, or say a whole lot about anything. I mean, I'm just getting stuff from people, you know, that's that's stopping by and stuff. Hey, I heard this, you know, the big rumor mill and stuff going on, you know, they're going to Saturdays, and, and I've heard, you know, they're going to alternate cars. I mean, I've heard all kinds of stuff, but as far as actually hearing anything from uh, Mike and Carolyn, I, I I couldn't answer this, guy. Okay. All right, Bob. I appreciate it, buddy. Hey, thanks, guys. All right. Enjoy thanks. The show. All right. Hollywood Bob. I, I will tell you that Mike White told me they're going Saturdays. Yeah. Yeah, I I I'd heard that too. Yeah, he t- you, t- you talked to Mike. I so. talked to him down at Lucas Oil Speedway. He yeah. said that. Yeah, and, going to Saturdays. He said. And the person you just heard is the voice of L.A. Raceway, Hollywood mm-hmm. Bob. Yeah, Bob Ramey. And for the record, Kyle Larson is twenty years old. He was born July thirty first, nineteen ninety two. Ninety two. Isn't that some? Ninety two. Ninety two. I was changing tires for Cooper in their ASA car. It's tire changer. It's one of the few years that I uh, that that I uh, I took a break from racing. Ninety two, ninety three. For us old guys, it doesn't seem that long ago, does it? No, no, that's twenty years ago. You know, I'm it's a crazy. big believer in you either have it or you don't, and I think we all agree, Kyle Larson, whatever it is, he has it. it. Yeah, as you pointed out with Shane Meal a little bit earlier. Sure, like to see old uh, Mike White go ASCS with the three hundred fives. Well, I'd like to see everybody just uh, adhere to the same rules package for the 305s, and I think if they do that, then it would grow a lot faster. Kurt, let me ask you this. We, we had pay-per-view broadcast out there at the Western Union, Um and we know that we did the pay-per-view with Michael Riggs being dirt on dirt down at Short Track Nationals. If you're a promoter, do you want live television at your racetrack? Even if it's paid per view, or let's take it a step further. If it's free, like Lakeside Speedway, what do you think? 
because this was the big debate, you know. What we do is a little bit different than video. We try to paint a picture to people, make it with our audio broadcast, our radio broadcast, the right. national tour. What we try to do is entice people to want to come and watch it. You know, ooh, that sounds exciting. I've got to go watch it. That's how we sell our product to people. But there's starting to get more and more of a trend of people wanting to see the video. Well, my philosophy about all of that is uh, I look at my own self and how my habits are, which is may, may or may not be typical to most people. Do I stay home uh, just because it's on TV rather than being there? And auto racing is a different sport than most other sports. I'm a big believer that you do not capture the full flavor of the event watching it on television. I think you got to be there to see it. So the question is, do you stay home and watch it on TV rather than go to the event? I've never done that. I've never stayed I've never stayed home because it's on TV so I can save money. Now you have stayed home to watch an NASCAR race on TV when the local races is on. It doesn't happen often, but you've done it, right? We've all done sure, it. Sure, we've all done that. We've all done it. But uh, I, I think I think that just the fact that it's being televised or on pay per view, I don't think in large measure it keeps people from uh, going and spending money at the racetrack just because it's on TV and they can watch it there. Um, Sam, we're getting a lot of static right now. Just FYI, so listeners at home getting a lot of static. Still static, guys. Static, yes, yes. I'll check it out. I'll Keep get, talking. I'll, I'll get Kirk in there. Um, you know, I, I I'll, I'll tell you my thoughts on that. I, I'm not sure that if I'm Lakeside Speedway, and listen, we, we do a show over at Metro Sports, and they do a great job, and we should be grateful for what they've done to expose local racing to the to the uh, local people in this area and around this area. They don't. There's no better company than what's going on with the uh, time warner cables metro sports over there and we feel blessed to have a show over there but i will tell you attendance was down at lakeside at the end of the year now a lot of people would say what's that have to do with what is it having a lot to do with the the uh, uh the weather was it too hot got people out of the habit did the flood get people out of the habit of going or did people just get tired of Hot weather and decide, you know what, I'm going to stay home and watch the race. And then once the season got going and they watched the race on TV two or, th- two or three times, they decided, well, I'd rather watch it on TV. I don't know. But I can. I know one thing. The attendance was down at Lakeside at the end of the year. I mean, way down compared to what it was five or six years ago. Now, a lot of people say that's the economy. And people are hopeful that the economy is going to rebound. And that had a lot to do with it. I don't know. What really caused that? All I know is is that uh, one of the races, and I'll just be fair, one of the races that I went to out at Lakeside Speedway didn't have a bigger crowd than when it was pavement. There couldn't have been 1, 1,100 people in the grandstands, and that's about, you know, eight or 900, 1,000 people showed up for pavement races back in the day. I don't know what that, I don't know what's the cause of it. I don't know if it's the paid per, uh, the the television. I don't know if it's the heat. I don't know if the flood. Again, I've said it a thousand times. Sometimes, I think uh, people get out of the habit of going when they're away from a racetrack, and I think that has a lot to do with what happened to Lakeside with the flood. I think people got out of the habit of going and found a place to spend their entertainment dollars somewhere else, or better yet, to save their entertainment dollars that they spent at Lakeside. And maybe on the heels of it being flooded. Maybe, just maybe on the heels of it being flooded, it wasn't the right idea to have TV out there. Maybe you wait a year and not have live TV, get people back into the habit of going to the races, and then put the TV on. You know, people get out of the habit. They're not going. Now that's on TV, they don't have to go. They, in fact, some will say you get more information by watching television than you do actually being at the race. Well, it is interesting that they had such great crowds at the start of the season. Uh, before the live TV broadcast. And even during the first few weeks of the TV broadcast, the crowds were still there. And then all of a sudden, when it got hot, uh, it did it did tail off. And then when the TV package ended, uh, the crowds were still down, mm-hmm. in my opinion. So I, I think there was something to the, the fact that the weather was hot 
and uh, and people, a couple nights I was out there though it wasn't hot and the crowd was still down. Well, after after the hot weather had passed, those people didn't come back. They you know the crowds got didn't, out of the habit. They, I think you're onto something there. I think they got out of the habit of coming and didn't come back. Either that or a lot of people ran out of money. And they didn't have any entertainment dollars to spend after a while. I don't know the answer to that, but I thought it was very surprising to me that once those crowds tailed off, they didn't return back at those special events at the end of the season. If you're tight on your money and you don't have the dollars in your pocket, Say, oh, man, that extra 20, I, I could use that in my tank of gas when gas was up there about $4 a gallon. Sometimes that guy say, you know what, I'll keep my 20 in my pocket. I'll eat the food in my refrigerator, and I won't be- burn any gas driving over there to see the race. I don't know. It's just something to think about. I, I, I was pretty surprised by the attendance at Lakeside at GMP. I was, too. Yeah, I was, I was mad, especially if when it, it was so was, good at the beginning of the season. Well, here's the thing, because I'm not here every week, and you were, and the attendance was good at the start of the season. I think a lot of people were excited about Lakeside opening back up. But I think that's what floors me the most, is I didn't see the, the transition from a lot of people down to not as many people. Now, granted, they still have more people than anybody else around here. Let's be fair with that. Nobody puts more people in grandstands than – Lakeside Speedway on a weekly show. Is there? Do you know of anybody? Well, I don't think so. But, I mean, it, it still was way down. It wasn't just a little bit down. It was way down towards the end of the season when it got into the middle part of August mm-hmm. and into September. And, and you know, the, the crowds just never never came back. It was very surprising that it tailed off to that extent in the last few weeks of the TV broadcast, which I think could possibly had an impact because of the hot weather. Mm-hmm. But I figured once it cooled off and got better that people would come back in better numbers. And and how they didn't get a large number of people for the ASCS regional show the third weekend in August and the Jayhawk, the McCarthy Auto Group Jayhawk Modify Classic uh, crowds were a little bit down. That was very surprising to me. Yeah. Hollywood Bob says he DVR'd it and then went back and watched it later after he went to the local track. Yeah. I have a hard time watching things that I know the end. It's like watching a cup race. Uh, if I tape a cup race and then I know who won the race, I can't go back but and watch But it. if there are certain parts of the race that, uh, of course, you don't have replayability when you're there live, you saw it in person, but you want to see that again, mm-hmm. I, I want to go back and look at that part again. Right. That's kind of fun to do. Well, I don't know. Just something to talk about, you know, being that we've seen some guys doing the pay-per-view out there. Now, I will tell you, it didn't hurt our numbers. Really, to speak of out there, our no. broadcast numbers, which is free, there's just certain people that will not pay online right. to watch something. Speaking of that, well, Kurt, we've noticed it on our Chili Bowl broadcast, you know, that there are certain numbers of people that won't, uh, that we had. Oh, no. When we went. When it was free. When it was free, we did 80% more <laughs> yeah, probably. Right. That's no joke. That's right. I mean, we went for six or 7,000 listeners to a couple thousand. Just going by paper, listen. Which crashed our server, by the way, when we had hundreds of thousands of people trying When's to get on When's that going to be up, Kirk? Is that going to be up today? Yeah, it's ready to go. We I just mean, need to, I mean the, where the people can purchase the channel? Yeah, it should, should be. I mean, we uh, we checked all the, the other stuff out. The site is updated, and uh, we should have it ready to go today. Yeah. Um, I just want you to take a look at it before okay. we launch okay. it. Steve uh, says uh, attendance was down. As far as attendance, Valley was down to especially Friday's portion. You think they'll bring back the Friday night program? What are you hearing, Kurt? You talk to Dennis? I, th- I think he will. I think he's going to bring it back from all indications. Uh, uh, if he doesn't, I hope that I he adds he the will. sprint cars to the Saturday night program. Late models, did. Uh, Steve, you were there. Anybody else that was at uh, Valley Speedway? Matt, I see Matt on there. You're the, not going to see ULMA late models return on Friday nights. I that's what I was so. getting ready to ask. No. Huh? I don't think so. I don't think that's been officially announced, but uh, I don't look for the ULMA late models to come back to Valley. Why is that? How come the how come the, the late model guys don't support that track? Is it just too far for some of the guys that run ULMA? I mean, is there not enough of those cars around this area? I think the total number of car count 
in the ULMA late model division is not near what it is in modifieds. You've got plenty of those to spread around. And so with the not real large number of ULMA late models out there, the great majority of them are running Saturday nights down at Lucas Oil Speedway and not running two nights a weekend. There's a lot of racers that are not running more than one night a weekend because they can't afford it. Clint Brown said they already announced that uh, ULMA will not be back next year. So Friday as planned, ULMA not returning according to their announcement. All right. But there's a lot of racers that just can't afford to run more than one night a weekend. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the ULMA guys are choosing to run Saturday nights down at Lucas Oil Speedway. That's where they get the greatest car count. We should probably get Dennis on and talk to him about that. But I look for Valley to run two nights a weekend again next year. Like I say, I don't think that's been officially announced yet. Dennis, man, he's not afraid any, of work. I don't he? see any indication that he's going to change that. Is there anybody that works harder at doing what they do than Dennis? He uh, does it all. Huh? I mean, really. I think the guy gets slammed a lot un- unfairly be honest with you you know uh i i don't know of anybody when i go to the racetrack there's two or three people there and he's one of them and he's out there getting dirty the one thing about dennis shroud is he'll stand up to whatever criticism that's out there he doesn't run off and hide like you see some promoters do he'll take it i i did hear that they are considering running midgets there at valley yeah i did hear that well now would that be uh uh joe boyle's deal I think Ray Boyles is uh, Ray's behind this, behind behind what I'm hearing. Yeah, but Joe had the American Midget Series AMS, I think is what it was called. Right. right? I didn't. haven't talked to Joe recently to see what that the didn't really work out too well for that. I don't know. I don't think that worked out too well. You know, midgets is a hard thing. You know, you don't have all that many midget cars in this area. Keep open wheel racing alive. That's all I'm asking. Because we, we, we are really working our way back to the days in the 60s and 70s when sprint car racing kind of was the thing around here. I'm not saying it ever replaced modifieds or B-mods, but it's it's right below those two. I hate to say that B-mods rule over sprint car racing, but in this area, they probably do. But with that, I think right now, if you were to pecking order what fans like to watch around here, it'd be A-mods. B mods, sprint cars, late models. Would you agree or disagree with that? Yeah. Would you put late models in front of sprint cars? Uh, not right now. I think sprint cars has uh, moved moved ahead, especially at Valley Speedway. Well, you know, late it, models is, is kind of a tough situation right now. Three sixty sprint car racing is big around here. Let's just yeah. be fair. It's big in Central Missouri. It's uh, non wing racing is good here, and. Um, you know, 360 racing around here is pretty damn good as well. I mean, you got every one of these tracks, except for Lakeside next year, as of right now, doesn't have an ASCS. A, a lot of your racers that would be running late models are now running modifieds. Mm-hmm. You know, because a lot of more, guys more, that were running A mods, a lot of guys that were running A mods are running B mods. Right. Klauski comes out on top. So it's tough on late models right now. Because of that, yeah. Because of the popularity of the modifieds and the and the addition of the B mods has right. helped that along. Bob's the only guy; he's the only candidate right now for a t-shirt or hat. We've got him eight one six eight three three eight five five three eight one six eight three three eight five five three. Chime in, let us know what you think. And uh, Kirk, you put a poll up on uh, Racing Boys about a week or so ago, and the question wa- was, would you like to see more combo sprint? car slash late model national dirt series events combo now combo that means combo events like, sprint cars and so late basically models on like the same uh night. seeing a lucas oil late model series with the lucas oil right sprint car series right now and you know i was a little surprised by this uh 68 percent of the 539 people that voted said yes they'd like to see more combos i'm a little surprised by that because Late Usually model people, either or. Late model fans are late model fans. Yeah. Sprint car fans are sprint car fans. So at least that's the impression that we've got out there. But you know, I I don't think I'm atypical of a lot of race fans around. I like them both. I I'm a big sprint car oh, fan. I, I like the late models too. You know, if they're out there running side by side and battling to the checkered flag, I don't care what kind of car they're in. To me, that's I like it. See, my pecking order 
It's different. I'd rather watch a sprint car race, a winged sprint car race, than a modified A-mod race. A-mods are my second favorite. Then I'd rather watch a non-winged sprint car race. And then I'd like to watch a late model race. That's kind of my pick. Well, I prefer, order. as far as sprint cars, I prefer the non-wing over the wing cars. Just you know, I, pure I, enjoyment as a fan watching it. I used to be that way, but now traveling with the national tour, I'm more of a wing guy. And to be honest with you, brutally honest, damn non-wing cars are too freaking dangerous. That's that's. And I don't rub. like seeing my. I don't like seeing people get hurt. That's the rub about non-wing sprint car racing. They are I, dangerous. I love... See, and non-wing sprint cars were my favorite for the longest time. But I've just... After Jeff Osborne and, you know, the accidents that I've seen the last couple of years, I'm just... I don't know, man. Something has soured me a little bit on the non-wing. I still enjoy them because they're sprint car racing. I just don't like seeing people get hurt, and there's a reason they put wings on these cars back in 79 and 80. There's a reason for that. And Safety. I, and I think people have kind of grown immune to how dangerous these cars are. Well, they are safer than they used to be, but they're still not safe. Non-wing cars I'm talking about. Before cars, the days they had the side panels on the in the driver's cockpit, Right. arms were flying around, didn't have the, the restraints. Let's be fair. Um, Sprint car racing is the most dangerous form of dirt track racing there is. No question about it. Other than maybe AMA Grand National Motorcycle Racing. But that's the draw. That's why sprint car racing is so popular, and they draw so many fans to the track, because they are dangerous, and the fans, when they buy the ticket, know that. When they walk in, they know how dangerous it is. That's why it's so popular. It's kind of like when you went to I-70 Speedway. (laughs) That's it. It wasn't sprint car racing, but you knew if you went there, there was a good chance you were going to see something you'd never seen before. You know you have a greater chance of watching a race car go upside down and flip at a sprint car race than you do a late model or a modified event. And Does that say fans something? Fans like to see cars get upside down. They don't want to see anybody get hurt. Fans don't want to see anybody get hurt, but they like to see cars flipping. And you're going to see that at a sprint car race more times than not. That's why it's popular. Was uh, was it that Keith Hutton that died up there when you were? Keith Hatton, yeah. Hatton. It, was the, it was the worst worst night of racing in my whole career. I'll say that right wow. now. That, that was Oski. That was at Oskaloosa. And I can't remember exactly what year it was. But, About uh, five years ago, wasn't it? When Keith Hatton's car got up on a wheel ahead of him, non-wing race at Oskaloosa, Iowa, and got up into the fence, and I won't go into any other... Sheared off the dis- roll cage. Any we'll just leave it at that. ...what happened, right. but it was as shocking and an unbelievable scene that I thought I would ever witness in over 40 years of racing. It, it uh, still affects me to this day. And those that were those people that were there that we'll night know what I'm talking about. And uh, it it was the most unbelievable scene I thought I'd ever see in racing, and it was uh, it was pretty shocking to this old boy who'd been around a while. Well, it the way the crowd handled it, and the way they had the preacher go on and start saying prayers and everything, it was just surreal, wasn't it, Kurt? Yeah, and you know the the thing that I'll always remember was your first thought is. You just want to leave. I want, I want to get out of there, but I wanted to stay. Mm-hmm. And why is that? It's because all of the other thousands of people that were there that just witnessed the same thing I saw, we needed each other to comfort each other. And so we wanted to stay. We stayed and didn't leave, which would be surprising to most people who weren't there that would hear me tell about this. Were you surprised the races went on? Uh, yes, yes. They did go on. They did finish it up, but nobody really cared about the outcome. Mm. And to be honest with you, I can't even remember who won that night. Nor do I care. <laughs> wow. It was bad. Well, Scotty Cook said the same thing. He was sitting there in about the same location you were, said it was just 
surreal when you watch the moment happen because it was so right there in front of everybody what happened. We had to watch somebody de- get decapitated right in front of your very eyes is something you never forget. Mm-hmm. Terrible, terrible. Can we talk about something else? <laughs> yeah, but my, my point is is non-wing sprint car racing and how dangerous it is. And, yeah. And I, I hate to be a, a, a bag, but some of these guys that are running the non-wing cars around here, I hate to say this. Well, I was there. They don't really need to be in one. I was there the night Jeff Osborne lost his life out there earlier in the season. And, uh, you know, it's uh, that, that didn't look that bad when you first watched it. was, you know, coming around for the white flag of the final race of the night and uh, got up got up into the end of the fence and hit roll cage first in the pole which you know it's like the Dale Earnhardt incident it didn't first didn't look that bad mm-hmm. you, knew you knew it, it was well. bad when Dale Earnhardt when Schrader went there and looked in the car and then he started frantically waving over people to the mm-hmm. car you knew right then this isn't good no. I was there at that race and I'm going to tell you, me and my friend went out and sat in the car, and they wouldn't let anybody leave out of the parking lots. They had wanted no traffic flow. And here comes the ambulance that was hauling Dale Earnhardt, and it wasn't going fast. Had its lights on. Wasn't speeding down the road, though. And I know that uh, Mike and me looked at each other and said, well, that's kind of weird. Not only did it look weird, we didn't know. Nobody said anything. And we were driving down the road, and... And back in those days, we didn't have satellite radio, so we weren't really in tune with what was going on at the track until we got up to Atlanta or headed towards Atlanta. We stopped somewhere to eat, and we went into this restaurant. There's people crying everywhere. And that's when you first knew. That's when that we found out. It's when the people in the restaurant were crying. And what's what's going on? But when you're in the stands, he, you, he's didn't gone. Think it was that ba- you didn't think it was that bad. No. Yeah. Never in a million years did I think that that wreck would take the life of anybody. I've seen a number of fatalities in racing over my 40 years of following this sport. Mm-hmm. And uh, every time I always think about, why am I here? Why am I following this stuff? What, what's, what's the whole purpose of it? And uh, then, then you come back to the realization, well, it's not about that. It, it's why I like racing, it's about the people. It's about the uh, camaraderie. It's about the community. It's a, it, yes, the competition is thrilling and exhilarating. And when you lose it, uh, lose a race car driver uh it, it always it always sets you back and really makes you question whether or not you want to continue following the sport but i always came back and why is that it's just because it's part of our lives it's just who we are we're 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 wired like that we've been around it so long we're here you yeah. know we're we're part of the racing community and always will be no matter how many bad things we've seen we've seen a lot of good things too right. and we always come back to the thought that the good things that we've experienced in racing always outweigh whatever bad that we go along. You know what? That's life. That's just what life's all about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, Steve, don't worry about it. Steve says that. that uh, sorry, he brought that up. But don't worry about that, Steve. It's all good. That's what we do here. We, we <laughs> interact with you guys on the chat room. That's kind of what our number two is about. So make sure you tell your friends if they want to. Hang out and talk about stuff. We really don't plan what we're going to talk about. We have no idea. Second hour, we We have no idea. We just roll with it, right? (laughs) We just fire up the cameras, turn on the sound, and we do whatever, whatever happens, whatever comes to our minds. Had no idea we were going to be talking about. No, that's that's what makes us good. So no, it's all good, Steve. Um, and see, forty four says, um, anyone says race fans go to the races to see wrecks don't understand racing or race the racing family all right i i I gotta be fair i think a lot of fans go to the races to see wrecks they don't want to see anybody get killed they want to see see something that yeah death defying death defying but they don't want to see anybody die they don't want to see anybody die and you know what that's what makes racing great is because the drivers are doing what the ordinary person can't do or is not willing to do, and that's climb behind the, the wheel of a race car and go fast. Uh, the average person Get to does, the, is, it doesn't have the courage and, to do that. And take it to the edge of disaster. Right. There's a lot of guys that can drive race cars, but they don't go to the edge. They just go out and make laps. And that's the thrilling part about mm-hmm. racing is watching those guys that can take it to the edge and do what you you could. I suppose you're a race car driver, 
but I couldn't even think of doing it. Oh, you did. You were in second one night. I watched you. You made the pass on the outside at the legendary I-70 Speedway. You know, a little uh, pony stock car. You did it. You passed <laughs> Petro. Yeah, but I didn't do it in a wing sprint car. No, I you didn't. I didn't do that. <laughs> I, you know, you know, I'm going to go 200 mile an hour in a NASCAR sprint cap. Car. You know, at the very least, I'm going to drive that sprint car, at least make some laps in it. That I'm putting together. You know, that's what makes the, the fantasy, not the fantasy racing, but the Richard Petty driving experiences. Oh, yeah. and no doubt. Those things so successful because yeah. when, when people get behind the wheel of one of those cars, you go out there, they get a little bit of a sense of just how hard that is and just how special that is. It's easy to watch a guy go around racetrack right. and think that's easy until you do it, try to do it yourself. You know, then you realize, hey, this is really tough. You know what? That, 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 but that is a little misleading when people go out there and do that because they're running about 130 miles per hour. Go 50 miles an hour faster off into a corner. It changes everything. But you're thinking about that. You're thinking, hey, this is not even close as fast as those guys do, and this is – crazy as it is right so i mean that it's uh that's the great thing about racing is you're watching guys do things with a car everybody wants to drive a car everybody does drive a car everybody yeah. crawls behind the wheel of their own passenger car and drives down the street no matter what you're doing now you look at a race car driver behind the wheel of a car and you think you you you, you always envision what would it be like to do that? Mm -hmm. And you know you can't do it, but watching somebody else do it and do it well is pretty exciting to me. Bob said he did the Kansas deal. He thinks everybody should do it well worth the money. Steve said, I drive on the interstate and go 70 to 75. I go and have uh, have gone to the races to see men and women uh, do something that I only dream of. Yep. The skill drivers exhibit is amazing. I agree. But everybody loves cars. Right. And and when you watch him go fast with special people driving them, that's right. exciting to a lot of people. You got that tape queued up in there, Todd? Yeah, I got it, ma'am. You got it? All right. We're going to close the show with uh, the video that we uh, uh, put together. Todd put it together. Again, we retrieved this video from Jeff Eller, and uh, it was also shot by Larry Myrtle, two guys that were out at I-70 every week. Loyal supporters of that racetrack. Shot a lot of video. In fact, Todd, what we leave on the floor probably, we, you probably didn't use six or seven minutes worth of that. Yeah, we, we left out some of that for maybe later on. Another project. Some more projects. Yeah, we're going to work on another one. But this is about, what was it, about 13 minutes yeah, long? Yeah, 12 and a half minutes. Of 12 minutes, 32 seconds, I mm -hmm. think is what it was. And uh, Todd put this thing together. You did a good job, brother. I appreciate it. It's your first project like this, and uh, you did a really good job. First time out of the box. And um, so, anyway, we took all this video, we put some music to it, and uh, just kind of show you the 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 thrill of racing at I seventy Speedway. And you know, first time I watched this video, I watched it and I went, "Man, is this ever going to end? One wreck after another, after another, after another, after another." And you're thinking, "All right, I've watched seven, eight minutes of this. Surely it couldn't be much more." And there's just more and more and more and more. It just goes on and on and on and on and on and Looks on. Looks like a video game. It's really remarkable, like you said, Kirk, that nobody lost their life out there in any of these accidents. That's the most amazing part of the whole thing. I mean, uh, Jake uh, Richards' wreck in the dash car, where it turns hard right and pounds the wall, comes to mind. Any one of those fireworks. I'm going to tell you, the Tony Walls wreck is there. That's that's pretty horrifying to watch. But the most horrifying wreck of all those to me is Ron Hartford's modified wreck where he's on fire. When him and, and uh, uh, Kent Roberts got together, they had a little grudge thing going on out there at the racetrack, and they were beating and banging and crashing each other a lot at that period. And Ronnie Hartford... Uh, his modified catches on fire, and it seems like he's in that car sitting over there off a of turn two. For seems like he's he in didn't there. Didn't get hurt at all, did he? Oh no, it burned him pretty good. Oh, did yeah, it burned him pretty good. I mean, he's got some scars from it. He went back to racing pretty much right away. Oh didn't yeah, he? yeah, yeah. Ron Hartford's one of the t toughest <laughs> dudes I've ever met. He got burned up. We were going back to racing right away. Me and Ronnie haven't always that. seen eye to eye, but I will tell you one thing: when it comes to the local racer, he's super stud. I didn't realize how much that did burn him up. That yeah. that wreck. Not good. And then uh, 
you just see several of the wrecks that Rick Carver wrecked. It's on here is where he goes over the wall, slow motion. You see it in slow motion and pounds that John scoreboard. John O'Neill's wreck's on there. John O'Neill's uh, wreck is on there as well. So we're going to play that here in a minute. I hope you enjoy it. We're going to do some more of that stuff over the winter. I'll be headed off to uh, the PRI show as soon as the show's over here today. Also, the uh, Indy Trade Show is going to be going down there. Hopefully, we'll get some interviews for Racing Boys TV. We'll put some stuff up here on the Internet as well as can some stuff for uh, Time Warner Cable's Metro Sports Racing Boys TV that we'll be doing again in 2013. So we're looking forward to that. Don't forget, also, we'll be doing all the Lucas Oil ASCS National Sprint Car Races again in 2013. Lucas Oil signed up to be our title sponsor. If your company would like to be a part of those broadcasts or anything that we do at Racing Boys, including the Tulsa Shootout or the Chili Bowl Nationals, which you can hear live again on Racing Boys for $6.50. You can listen to the Tulsa Shootout. For $9.95, you can listen to all five nights of the Chili Bowl Nationals. Uh, We're going to work on some things. I'm I'm thinking we might try to do what we did a couple years ago. Don't hold me to it. But we're looking into maybe possibly doing the, uh, uh, the media room live video at the end of it. If we can get Todd to go down there with us and leave his family for a week and go down there and travel down with us. We might just try to pull that off. So should be a lot of fun. Chili Bowl Nationals again, live on Racing Boys, 995. And uh, don't forget uh, the National Tour again in 2013. 